Okay, today I want to do another one of these uh, videos where I try to take the, the 10,000 foot uh, look at uh, the perspective of where we're at right now, as opposed to focusing on minutia, which is something that I, I do think it's also interesting to do from time to time, although you can get a little too wrapped up in it from time to time, to the exclusion of seeing the wider, bigger picture, which is what I am attempting to do in this video and what I attempted to do in the video that I recorded yesterday, uh, where uh, I discussed the use of uh, quote-unquote misinformation as a, as a means of uh, promoting censorship or a means of disguising censorship. In other words, we're not really, we're not really censoring anything. We're just, we're just um, making sure that harmful misinformation, disingenuous word, as they in the manner that they use it uh, doesn't doesn't uh, get promoted. Um, so we didn't see that coming. I didn't see that coming. If you'd asked me six years ago, do you think that the powers that be will will uh, get people uh, taken uh, off of public platforms and and make it so that their voices can't be heard because they will be characterized as misinformation? I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have had any reaction to that because it wasn't happening yet, but then it started happening. Uh, now, what I want to talk about today are the social movements of the late 20th century. Let's look exclusively at the um, civil rights movement um, and uh, uh, the women's uh, liberation movement, if we could, if we could call it that. Um, I don't know what... Uh, what would be a better word uh, to use uh, than that? But we'll, we'll just use those terms, um, you know, for whatever they're worth, just to designate or denote them, uh, you know, without there being any uh, any necessarily good or bad connotation to them, but just to describe them. Now, it is my contention that these uh, these movements were stage managed by uh, those in power in order to uh, affect change that they wanted to have happen in society um, and how they wanted to take a, uh, uh, a, a, a well-ordered society uh, and, uh, and make it more, uh, more chaotic uh, and therefore uh, strengthen the, um, the overall impetus towards centralization, because when you have a chaotic society, you've got to have a strong centralized power to keep everything in check, don't you? Uh, well, let's start with uh, the women's lib stuff. You know, it's been admitted that, uh, you know, even Gloria Steinem was a CIA asset. Uh, she's she's admitted it, um, and there have been other, other things that we've heard from time to time, a uh, fascinating interview actually conducted by uh, by Alex Jones a few years ago where he was talking to this man I don't recall his name right now but who was the a big time uh, like uh, businessman and eventually a Hollywood producer uh, uh, Rousseau Aaron Rousseau uh, he produced the, the, the film trading places uh, with Dan Aykroyd and Eddie Murphy and he was involved in a lot of, you know, high, high-level stuff uh, in Hollywood and in business. And in this interview, he's he's which which I believe you can still find, you can probably still find it even on YouTube. I'll see if I can put a link to it, even if, wherever it comes from. I know you, I know it's still out there. Um, but uh, in this interview, he talks about meeting one of the Rockefellers, meeting one of the a member of the Rockefeller family and having a sort of extended uh, friendship with this guy. Um, and this guy sort of let him in on a little secret, which was women's lib was not about uh, helping women. It was not about creating better opportunities for women. It was instead about uh, changing conditions so that uh, men and women both would have to, to have jobs, have to have office jobs, rather than the man working and the woman staying at home. Uh, and this way, you, you, uh, uh, you 
make it so that there is twice the amount of taxable income. That's it. That was it. According to this guy, it was a completely cynical enterprise. Um, of course, not everyone involved in it was cynical. And I don't mean to uh, express express uh, uh, or construe things as if that were the case. Um, and I, I, I do think that there were uh, places, you know, things that, that, that needed to be improved in society. Um, do, does that mean that I'm against tradition? No, I am an upholder of tradition. But I do think that we should have uh, the freedom to live traditionally or to, uh, or to not, not live traditionally, uh, if, if that is our inclination. So I don't think changing conditions to the, for, for women, you know, with, with regard to women's lib, I don't think cha changing conditions to make it so that it was okay for women to be stay at home mothers and do, and, uh, and, uh, and traditional wives while at the same time opening up the opportunity for women who didn't, who, who saw themselves uh, going down a different trajectory to, uh, you know, pursue the more professional life. You know, I don't see anything wrong in that choice being, uh, being out there. I think when that choice is out there, but there's no particular push uh, to, to make women be one way or the other, I think that, you know, you'll still have most women and, you know, and you have the same economy that you had, you know, in the 40s or 50s where one, one person, uh, one head of the, of the household can uh, uh, raise a family, uh, you know, on his factory job and, and live in a decent sized home and have an automobile and, and all of that, you know, the way the, the, that uh, the economy was uh, way back when. Um, given that th those sort of circumstances uh, still being in effect, I think most women would still opt for the traditional um, trajectory. However, there are those who wouldn't, and I think they should be able, those who, who wouldn't should be able to. Uh, so if women's lib were pursued in that way, if it was like, uh, you know, we want to maximize the happiness of all, if possible, uh, you know, within certain parameters, of course, of, of what's, what's reasonable for within a certain uh, uh, cult cultural circumstance. Um, so if we could, uh, if, if we saw a women's lib movement that was, say, not, that was not telling women, you know, uh, uh, all the awful things that it eventually told them, um, you know, burn your bras, uh, become promiscuous, uh, you know, do, do everything that men do because, uh, there, there's no real difference between men and women, uh, <laughs> biologically speaking, which is patently absurd, you know, absurd on the very face of it. Nobody really actually believes that. So if instead of teaching, uh, pushing those kinds of things, those kinds of ideas, which might have all been for cynical reasons, just to, uh, you know, double the size of uh, taxable income. Uh, as as, uh, as uh, uh, Rousseau's friend uh, shared with him in that interview. But if it had been more what, like what I, what I was saying, like we're going to open up avenues, we're going to make it so that uh, if a woman has the wherewithal and the, and the know-how uh, and, you know, wants to, has the inclination to, uh, to pursue the professional life in this field or that field that she should be able to. And indeed, you know, there are cases of, there, you know, the exception to the rule, but there are cases of women who, who, uh, you know, bring a lot to, uh, the professional world. Um, and, uh, that, that's their, that's really where they, you know, where they feel at home. Um, that doesn't make them any less women than the, than the, than the kind of women who, want to stay home and have, and have children, uh, it still makes them women. Uh, but again, if there was, if there was, you know, it's, it's not like they should, <laughs> the kind of things that we hear today, like, oh, well, they should really, they're, they're really men. They should, uh, you know, get gender reassignment surgery and become men. All, all this more, uh, 
just evil absurdity that's being promoted. But if women's lib were promoted in a way that was the least disruptive to societal order and harmony, uh, it would be to say, okay, ladies, we want you to be able to work if you want to work, uh, if you want to have an office job and pursue that life, uh, you know, you, you have the freedom to do that. Or if you want to be, if you want to opt for the, tra for the traditional um, uh, lifestyle of the wife and mother, you certainly are able to do that as well. But no pressure one way or the other. That would have been a way of uh, expanding opportunities for women uh, without causing immense destruction uh, to, the, to the fabric of society. Clearly, that was not their wish. Clearly, their wish was to cause immense destruction to the fabric of society, because that's what happened. Um, and I don't believe... I mean, I guess one could say that all, that, that all just fell out by, by accident, or it was just, you know, uh, an unfortunate set of circumstances that led for those things to happen. I would, I would disagree with that. I think there are documented forces from on high who wanted these changes to be made. Okay. So that's so far as women's lib. Now, with the civil rights movement, you know, um, this gets a little trickier because there were obviously, you know, I, I will say uh, in the early part of the 20th century that there were obviously manifest manifestly unjust uh, uh, set of social circumstances that blacks lived under uh, in many places in, in the United States and in, in the West generally, but especially in the United States because that's where, in the Western world, that's where most of them were. Um, and again, there was a way uh, of, and I think I, I would say this, I'd see this as a more serious problem than, than the women's lib issue uh, just because in many places uh, you know there was there there were these kinds of policies in place that were that were generally uh, very unjust towards this race of people um, so what's the solution that should have been pursued as opposed to the to the one that was pursued well th what we have seen, is uh, a process by which uh, divisiveness is uh, uh, is encouraged, um, by which groups that should be that should should see one another not one another as allies are pitted against one another. You know, the white working class uh, and uh, struggling uh, working blacks should have seen one another as allies, but they were pitted against each other as if it were a zero-sum game, as if it were us or them. And we have continued to see this kind of uh, notion, these kinds of notions being promoted, where uh, ordinary working-class or middle-class white people um, are told that they are nothing, are told that, that, they, uh, that they are evil, uh, are told that they are racist, and, uh, you know, this is the whole CRCT, culture of critique, whatever you want to call it, uh, or CRT, sorry, sorry, critical race theory, and all of its attendant manifestations. Um, there was a way to up, up, to, uh, uphold blacks. There was a way to stand up for the black population, uh, for, 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 for a more, just society uh, for the for these people that did not involve the denigration of white people, particularly struggling white people, or working class white people, um, you know, who have their own own stuff to deal with. But it it, it turned out again there was this strategy of uh, of divisiveness, pushing divisiveness. Um, and it would be, it would be one thing if it was like, we, uh, uh, you know, um, if it was, uh, intending for this divisiveness to be, um, 
to be pushed, you know, if, if a wedge was driven between struggling blacks and the corporations who exploited them or exploited their labor, um, you know, which would exclude the vast majority of the white population, which, uh, you know, have, again, uh, are also, you know, working for peanuts and, and struggling to get by and, and, uh, uh, getting, uh, getting poorer while the rich are getting richer. Um, so, so there, there could have been, and there should have been, and there sure there, there was a way to uh, uphold black dignity, uh, to uphold, um, the notion of justice for blacks living under unjust social conditions that did not involve the vilification of whites, uh, especially the, you know, the poor, we saw a lot of, uh, you know, uh, anti redneck, uh, kind of, kind of notions and ideas being pushed. Um, where the, the redneck, I put that, that term in quotes cause it's a slur even though it's a slur you're allowed to use these days. You're virtuous even if you use that, that slur. But it is indeed a slur, just like red skin. Um, <laughs> so, again, there was a way to pursue justice for this group that was the least disruptive to societal harmony. Um, you know... Groups like Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam, which Malcolm X was involved with uh, for much of his career until he broke broke from them, uh, you know, they certainly. I'm not. I'm not uh, recommending them as a as a uh, as a group to follow. I mean, they have some really kooky ideas, especially uh, about how white people were invented in a lab by an evil scientist. But I would say that to their credit. Um, they promoted the idea of blacks, uh, you know, st sticking together and, <clears throat> you know, being, being responsible for one another and living in community with one another and, uh, and, and, uh, you know, uh, self, self preservation. I don't, I'm, I'm struggling not to say pull your, the, the, up by your bootstraps, uh, kind of notion. I know that's a cliche, but something along those lines, you know, and, you know, uh, the truth is under segregation, there were institutions that were formed that were, you know, and, and, and colleges and that were all black, uh, that, that were helpful to black, uh, Americans that, that doesn't justify segregation, um, you know, as a legal thing. I don't think that uh, uh, this is, this is just like the, uh, or, or analogous to what I was saying a few minutes ago about if, if we, if, if, uh, if the social planners hadn't wanted to cause maximum disruption, but had, had goodness in their hearts and wanted to bring harmony, uh, they would have, uh, chosen to, re you know, find a way to remove these, uh, these unnecessary and unjust legal strictures. Uh, such as, you know, the ones that say, uh, you know, no women in, in the workplace ever. Uh, or the ones that say, if you're black, you have to drink from this water fountain, use this public restroom. And, and if you're white, you have to be over here. If you're, if you're black, you have to go to this school. If you're white, you have to go to this school. All the, you know, if you're black, you have to sit in the back of the bus or the back of the streetcar uh, and, and all, all those kinds of things that could have been removed uh, all of those ob obvious uh, you know strictures which treated blacks as inferior you know in a theater they all tell them they all had to, if you're black you had to sit in the balcony um, and so forth that those could all have been gotten rid of without there being a uh, a a big push uh, to uh, to turn the races against one another, and especially to turn the working and middle class members of the races against one another. <clears throat> uh, the elites never blamed themselves. They, they never saw themselves, even though they were 
almost all white um, and Jewish, but let's, let's not go there. Don't go there. <laughs> don't don't want to go the Kanye route. But anyway, um, you know, they, they didn't say, uh, oh, you know, we are so privileged and we're going to be, uh, uh, and, and we're going to be sh uh, sharing some of our wealth with, with you. It was more like those, those white people down there with you, they're the privileged ones. They're the ones who have white privilege. Uh, and uh, so they're the ones you should hate. Don't hate on us, the, the, the corporate and governmental elite, uh, the social elites. We, we are not the ones uh, who, who you should hate. We're, we're on your side, black man, um, when in fact they were fomenting all of this negativity. Um, that uh, resulted in things being the way they were. So, if the, these are ways that it could have been done differently, but it wasn't done differently, the women's movement and the civil rights movement, and as a result, we've got the kind of society that we've got today, which is uh, which is much much worse than uh, than it could be and should be. Thanks for watching.